Today is another special day for Epic. Join me on a virtual tour of another brilliant photonics company whose founders have been major drivers in the development of MEMS mirrors for about 20 years. Occumented are masters in high volume, low power consumption and small form factor, three key ingredients for success. Their novel MEMS mirror scanning solution has been integrated by many EPIC members in the fields of robotics, automotive, aerospace, augmented reality, face ID recognition and industrial manufacturing. We are crossing now live and we are going to the north part of the beautiful country of Germany. We're going to Itzeho and I would like to say hello to my hosts today. Hello, Occumented. Hello everybody and uh, welcome to the virtual company tour here at Augmented. My name is Thomas von Wanto. Next to me, this is Ulrich Hoffmann. Uh, we together have founded uh, Augmented and we are very happy uh, to present our company to you today. It is a great day because I used to travel 200 days a year and it used to be a fantastic life. And now we have uh, a certain situation we have to cope with. So we do everything from the comfort of our own office and having the chance to visit Itzeho. For those of you who are heavy metal fans, this is a few walking steps away from Wacken. <laughs> so it is great yeah. to be here. It is great to talk to you and it is great to find out a bit more about Occumented. So let's the thing rolling. Let's walk inside Occumented. Yeah. Maybe a few words. Uh, we are here located in Itzo, as you said, and uh, this is uh, the innovation center. Um, and next to me is Ralf uh, Tierike, who is head of the uh, innovation center and can give a short introduction. Yeah, hi, I'm, I'm Ralf from the IZ. Um, IZ is an innovation center. Um, maybe uh, you are familiar with that. Uh, so what we are doing is supporting high tech uh, startups uh, every day. So this is our business. And uh, our support is, uh, on the one hand, infrastructure. So we, we have uh, office space, we have labs, and we have a lot of other things uh, like uh, conference rooms and so on. Uh, in, in addition, um, there are services from, from postal services to whatever you can think about. And the most important of everything is uh, our support in terms of networks. So I believe uh, in networks for, for startups. This is one of the really key uh, uh, um, infrastructure things uh, for, for uh, companies to grow. Yeah, so um, the IZ is a per perfect place to be uh, for startups and it's a good location here. Uh, so we are in the north of the metropolitan region of Hamburg. Um, Hamburg and okay, you mentioned already Wacken. Uh, this is this is fantastic. And uh, with that in mind, uh, you can you can see uh, how how our innovation park, which surrounds us, grows. And uh, um, most most important for us is on the one hand uh, uh, micro technology, micro electronics, and things like that. Uh, we also have a, a strong reputation in. Um, renewable energies and battery systems, so the, the modern high-end lithium things. You said 14, 14 companies in the in the ISET right now. What is the, the process for any startup in the area of Hamburg or in the area of the world to, to set up base in ISET? So, so the most important thing is uh, um, that you have really good support. Uh, on the other hand, um, I think uh, uh, next step is growing of companies, and so we have space to settle. One of the things that all the companies all the, that you have uh, mentioned in common is that they target different markets when the volume is interesting. And on that, Europe always had a challenge. Going to volume production has been always a problem for the European ecosystem. How does ISET support the upscaling of these technologies? Uh, so the, the most important thing is you need, you, you need uh, uh, people uh, and employees equipped with the knowledge uh, uh, to do it and, and you need the space uh, where, where you can place your company and, and uh, both is given here. So I would like to say congratulations on this and also congratulations on having Occumented as one of your 14 companies. I'm not going to hide this. I'm a huge, huge fan of the technology we are about to see. Thank you very much for having us here and thank you for having this e-virtual coffee with me. Thank you very much. Yeah. Let's You're go welcome. inside.
So Thomas, let's go in and let's find yeah. out a bit more about Occument. I'm so excited. And I, you know, when you enter the company, the first thing you do is you take off your coat. I don't have to right now. And then we are walking and I love the design. I love the way that you guys look together. Uh, let's uh, talk a little bit about the company where we work. Uh, just give me a couple of teasers. What, uh, what is Occument and what are, what are we going to see today? Yeah, maybe we should start with our little background and history of Augmented because we were for quite a long time working at Fraunhofer before we founded Augmented. So the whole story started in 1994 when we began developing of MEMS mirrors and MEMS scanning solutions at Fraunhofer ISIT, originally in Berlin, later moved to It's a Hole here. And, um, Yes, and, and during those um, 25 years, uh, technology was improved step by step. The uh, people working on that topic became more and more. And finally, we understood that in order to get to real products, uh, it's necessary to leave Fraunhofer. Because within the tight boundary conditions of Fraunhofer, you cannot launch any products and uh, successfully exploit the technology. It's necessary to, to make this step, to exit Fraunhofer um, and spring into the cold water and um, yeah, jump into the cold water and, and start something new. That's what we actually did. And yeah, maybe you continue, Thomas. Yeah, the first so, thing that when I when I look at the logo, which is beautiful by the way, is that uh, I see uh, glasses and then I see an O and a Q. Is that correct? What, what, does the, what did inspire you for this, this really nice logo? Yeah, so, so actually the idea was uh, all this idea. So you, you all know the name Augmented, so which, which combines a display and sensing technology. And uh, we just replaced the first uh, letters by O and Q. The O is standing for optical. So we are doing optical uh, devices and the Q stands for our high Q, high quality uh, resonance uh, scanners, so that's the name augmented, and the OQ is very, yeah, fits very well to, to a nice logo. That was the idea behind it. From the very beginning, you identified augmented as a, as an optics, as a as a part of the optics community. Even though your main mirrors could have application in many other different technology sectors, what, what what was that? Why did you think let's push for the optical systems scanning instrumentation? Yeah, we had a very tight cooperation with a very famous consumer company some years ago and, and, and during the last years, I should say. And um, uh, within that um, um, technology development or mensural development, uh, we had uh, activities going on in the augmented reality uh, development uh, section. And uh, so we were deeply involved in, into the topic and, and this is mainly optically related. And, and uh, so of course there are other applications besides uh, consumer applications. Uh, you could also use laser scanning technology for uh, not only for automotive, but also for, for laser material processing. And uh, so there are quite, there's quite a wide range of different applications that uh, mesmer technology can support. Uh, it is it is a huge market today. We we had the three D the three D imaging. We had the AR VR market, and also of course the the five G, which is something that is is going to demand a huge push from the current photonics technology. Even we are gonna have and I already have phone with five G. We are a long way to implement the entire supply chain necessary to actually make this manufacturer for the scale that the industry demands. And Occument is one of the companies in this sector. How is Occument going to support the five G? Yeah, so um, I, I mean with our systems and our and the applications that, that we aim, all this data that uh, will then be transferred by 5G is, uh, is generated and has to be uh, then yeah, transported to the cloud, then computed and then transported back, for example, to the displays that we are uh, developing in form of uh, AR smart glasses. So for us, at least it's very important that the 5G um, yeah, is, is, is uh, deployed very fastly so that it can um, yeah, improve the the, um, the the applications that we that we are working on. Yeah, maybe we should add without 5G, we would not 
be successful in, in developing solutions for the automotive uh, LiDAR market where autonomous driving um, um, is, is a hot topic. Um, so autonomous driving will definitely require 5G and, and so there's a link and, and so, so everything is like uh, a complementary uh, puzzle and um, so we contribute our laser scanning solutions and the laser scanning solutions produce a lot of data uh, every second and without this uh, high bandwidth uh, data transfer of 5G, um, such solutions could not be realized. You mentioned now one of the key things that happened uh, when Occumented joined Tepic, all the companies manufacturing LiDAR wanted to talk to you and actually you did business with a couple. So I would like to also congratulate the Epic members who did business with you after your first entry in the, in the Epic network. Uh, how, how important is LiDAR for you and what is the present and your preferred future for the LiDAR industry and the scanning systems of Occumented? Yeah, we, we have from time to time a little sequence in the background display, maybe uh, you noticed already, and, and so, so part of our solutions are presented on its, uh, slides, on those slides and the little video sequences. Um, we developed something very special where we have currently a unique solution, I should say. Um, we can offer to the LiDAR um, technology market um, very wide angle field of view uh, laser scanning solution, which becomes of interest, for example, for blind spot detection. Um, well, you, you will be aware that most uh, sensor companies for the automotive LiDAR market currently have a focus for large range of measuring objects in, at far distance. Uh, but there's only little activity ongoing uh, for the uh, site LiDAR market. Uh, so I mean those parts of the car, oh, okay. <laughs> those parts of the car that are to the uh, left and right side of the car. Uh, so what we are focusing on is development of a mentioner device uh, and a laser scanning solution that allows to, um, to implement a LiDAR system small enough into the side mirrors of the car. Um, to detect the full range of 180 degrees field of view, um, to discriminate pedestrians, cyclists, and, and so on, um, and, and to, to make uh, the, the uh, traffic more safe by those um, uh, sensor systems. And currently there's no um, sufficiently um, reliable solution available for this um, wide field of view detection. Um, most sensor solutions have either a smaller field of view or they have very poor resolution. And that's uh, where we come into the picture and want to offer something which is um, providing high resolution but still maintaining the large field of view. So this is... Top, yeah, you have something yeah. there I really want to see because I have a lot of things on the table. Just show us, show us things that you're working on. <laughs> oh, <Yeah>. Thomas. <clears throat> Yeah, so here you see an exemplary um, map scanner. So um, it's not only providing this 180 degree uh, scanning angle, it's still very tiny and very compact. So that's a, a key for, for later mass produ production and, and um, cost efficiency. So you see that we as well have a special solution for the housing of this kind of device. So you see a kind of uh, bubble. So we call it bubble MEMS. And uh, this protects the scanner um, from, from any external um, yeah, um, contamination, contamination yeah. stuff like that, environmental um, uh, changes. And additionally, uh, by that package, uh, we can um, operate the scanner in vacuum. And that means that it uh, does not uh, have any kind of damping inside at resonance. So it's a very low power product. And everything is produced on wafer scale. So what we see here, an exemplary um, glass wafer. So all these devices are already sealed and packaged on wafer level, on eight inch wafer level. So that's uh, one main point for, for later volume production. And this is really the, the, the unique selling point. You managed to have a very high-end, high-tech scanning solution and you managed, and this is what I am in love with you, you managed to do it at wafer level. And this is where I think uh, the whole ecosystem is looking forward to, to welcoming you. Uh, do you want at some point show us maybe how this works? Maybe show us some, some demonstration? 
Yes, we can go on to the yes. colleagues and have a look and, and um, look for three different applications. One is focusing on, on the LiDAR topic, the uh, second one is on augmented reality, and the third one uh, is the topic of 3D sensing, or for example, mobile uh, phones uh, with 3D cameras, and then or, uh, tablets with 3D cameras. But we start with the 180 degrees field of view, a LiDAR demonstrator, and I hand over to Fabian, my colleague, and um, he will explain in more detail what you can see here. Hello, good afternoon. Thank you very much for this. We are super, super excited. I have many people in the room and also in YouTube wanting to see this demonstration. So please go ahead. Yeah, hi, I'm Fabian and I'm um, uh, MEMS Design. Um, I'm working MEMS Design here at Occumenta. Um, yeah, um, that means that I lay out our mirrors um, so they meet their desired physical um, requirements. Um, this is an example of one of our unique um, MEMS scanners or MEMS mirrors. Um, it is unique in that it can scan an optical field of view of 180 degrees. Um, to show this, uh, we put one of uh, our mirrors inside this little demonstrator here. You can see uh, the mirror is sitting right here. And uh, behind this red box, there's the electronics. Um, for this demonstration, we, we placed this um, laser pointer here, which is pointed at the mirror, and the mirror is scanning the light uh, onto this uh, screen here, as you can see. Um, now, our scanners are driven in closed-loop control. That means that we always know uh, in which direction our mirror is looking, and that allows us to uh, exactly control uh, the scan angle of our mirrors. Um, in this moment, the scanner is set to a scan angle of uh, 60 degrees, but uh, I can um, just uh, change the value here to, for example, 140 degrees, and the scanner will instantly uh, um, widen its angle to, one, to 140 degrees. <laughs> wow. Yeah, so um, one um, example application for this scanner would be uh, LiDAR. To prove this, um, we set up this little um, yeah, creation here. Oh, this um, is going to be cool. I cannot wait for this. <laughs> this so, is a robot. Oh, right. OK, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> it's not moving. So the only moving part is our scanner here. Um, the scanner is actually placed here, so it's quite um, small in comparison to the other uh, bulky stuff. Um, the um, We added um, uh, Another component here, um, which is uh, an infrared laser down here and a spot detector here. And this combination allows us to uh, scan our surrounding um, by um, scanning a vertical laser line horizontally um, and then measuring the time um, the light needs to travel this distance to an object and back to our detector. Um, here in the image, you can see uh, a little um, environment we created to test this setup. Um, for that, we placed uh, a paper figure here and a bicycle in our uh, cellar room. And yeah, down here, you can see the point cloud that is created with our scanner. Um, in this uh, setup, we reached a, a field of view of 160 degrees. Um, which is actually the limitation is uh, through our um, detector optics and not uh, our scanner. And yeah, this is a great result um, for such a, such a first um, setup for our uh, proof of concept of our mirror for other applications. What is, what is typical scanning speed that you're using? Yeah, the mirror is uh, scanning at um, uh, 1.5 kilohertz. And with this setup, we are able to reach about um, 20 frames per second uh, image. 25, uh, 20 frames per second? Yeah. Okay. No, but uh, what is, what is the, the demand that we that you normally get in the LiDAR segment that we normally get from the customers in terms of a scanning speed? What is really the, the, the... Is there a challenge there when it comes to scanning speed? Yeah, so there is a challenge, but the typical values we hear from customers is about 10 hertz, I think, right? 
that's the minimum at least. Yeah, yeah. maybe we should say for those customers who need higher frame rates, uh, we just can spend some more resolution or offer more resolution uh, or less resolution. So higher frame rate can be combined with lower lateral resolution, then you can increase the frame rate. So it's not the limit. So we can have 20 hertz frame rate or it can also be higher than 20 hertz, um, depending on the resolution um, that we want to achieve, the lateral resolution. So um, have, if we de decrease uh, the resolution, then we can increase the, the frame rate. So this is the, rel um, the relation. So it's always a trade-off, but this is already quite high frame rate and high resolution um, uh, uh, sensing. I was very happy and also impressed to see that also with a software control, you managed to tune the field of view. Uh, you went to 140 degrees. Uh, what is also a typical field of view that customers in the leather segment are demanding? Yeah, so, um, well, uh, as already suggested, so we are working here on a wide field um, uh, lighter. So we think that, that it would be very good to have in the car, uh, at the surroundings in the rear and in the sides, a lighter that is able to provide up to 180. So that means less systems are needed for a full 3D view around the car. So we are proposing with our solution a, a 180 degree field of view. When it comes to the, to the LiDAR, so on one hand, we have the automotive, which is going to be a booming market. It's going to be very interesting. There's a bit of hype there. But there's a huge, huge market opportunity for the LiDAR in the industry automation segment. And that is growing steadily. And that's a huge market for the high-end optic systems community. Do you see different set of specifications coming from the LiDAR clients in industry automation than the ones coming from automotive? Yeah, so, so I mean, the, the biggest difference is that in industrial applications, you do not need uh, all this auto, uh, automotive grade. Um, th so the AECQ100 uh, certification is not needed. So that makes, let's, let's say, the, the system setup uh, much more easier. Um, the volumes are, are lower, but um, from the uh, specifications and requirements, I think there are um, some, yeah, different uh, uh, applications, but it's not that uh, um, different from what we can provide here and I use in the autonomous space as well. So I think that industrial space, there are as well applications where it would be good just to have one or two small tiny sensors for having a full 3D, 360 degree field of view. So, and that's what we can provide as well with a solution. And for us, it's easier to, to assess this uh, because it's not, not uh, automotive grade. So, but we are, as well, focusing on automotive market because we have the only solution um, that, uh, due to this uh, vacuum packaging, can provide automotive grade man scan. Having, having your process automotively qualified, did it demand some effort from your side or from your customers, suppliers? Yes, yeah, so at least the full um, supply chain has to be automotive qualified. Um, up to now, we have not done this uh, completely for the full supply chain, but we have already shown with customers that our MEMS mirrors are capable of um, um, yeah, uh, achieving all these requirements that are um, required. So all these tests have already been done with special designs of our scanners, yes. And you know what, Thomas, the last time we met, you told me that you do something on augmented reality, which is very cool. So I heard you have another demo on AR VR. Yes. I yes, am, you should know something about me. I, I love photonics. I also love metal music and I go to Wacken and I also love gaming. So anything that you show on AR VR makes me super excited. Hello. Yeah, hello. This is our colleague Oleg, uh, and, and he can give a little introduction to the augmented reality uh, display activity that's going on at Augmented. Hi, yeah. Oleg. Thank you very much for this. I'm particularly excited about this. Go ahead. Yeah, you're, you're welcome. Yeah, thank you. So, first of all, here I would like to show you our, our small um, and uh, very handsome. Switch on the lights. Yeah, switch on the light, please. Yeah. Very handsome and very tiny uh, MEM scanner which is used for applications in AR and VR, also for Pico projection. And uh, yeah, this is, uh, so please make a look here to this system. Um, this is a test system, which I'm currently working on. And uh, yeah, I set it into the operation and it's now, right now it's running in, in real time. And um, the MEMS is, um, is controlled by our electronics here. and. Uh, projecting uh, 
um, video what is coming from the uh, from the computer directly. So if you look here, you can see uh, this small and beautiful uh, MEM scanner, which is um, yeah, uh, os resonant oscillating in two axes, and uh, the laser fires fire the the image um, the the pixel information, and it gets gets reflected by the here by this mirror and goes to the to our MEMS device where it is deflected into both axes X and Y. It uh, op operates synchronously, means that the pixel information is sent to the laser uh, according to the MEMS position. And in this uh, way you can project a whole image on the, on the projection wall here, or the projection surface. Any questions so far? I'm, I'm just impressed. You know, it's very difficult for me to, to not have words to say, but I'm just, I'm just extremely impressed. So this is, of course, the, there's a huge market coming, and we already heard the announcement of the iGlass last year from Google, the investment of SHOT on Smart Glass, the investment of Bosch Sensor Tech on Smart Glass. This is something that is coming. So what is your preferred future? How do you see Occumentis AR, VR scanning solutions uh, evolving in the market? Yeah, maybe yeah. we should first start yeah. again with yeah. some some more explanation. Yeah. Because what what yeah. we yeah you would you I would I would also wanted to, to show another another. Uh, oh no! Please please go ahead. So um, you're gonna show yeah, me yeah, glasses. Yeah, so you can get a um, better understanding what we want, so what we can, what we're able to do with this scanners uh, devices. So look here. So the uh, main idea is because the map scanner is uh, is so small it can be easily integrated into a glass frame here into the temples yeah yeah and um, so in this way the whole form factor of the light en uh, engine can be can be um, achieved can be kept very small so and uh, so you means that using our MEMS technology you can easily integrate it, and uh, you, you can actually enable the, all this um, yeah, augmented reality uh, applications for for uh, for the uh, customer market. So for uh, yeah, all day wearable smart glasses, for example. Maybe we should mention uh, some um, differentiation between augmented MEMS mirrors and MEMS mirrors from other suppliers or competitors. Um, most other competitors have solutions that are based on two single axis chips, and we use only a very small form factor two axis laser scanning chip. And that offers us an advantage with respect to size, um, manufacturing costs, so it can be very low cost mass production. And what is also very important for this kind of MEMS mirror is the power consumption that we can offer. It's extremely low. Thomas mentioned already uh, in, uh, some minutes ago uh, that uh, our MEMS mirror devices are hermetically sealed in a vacuum environment. And that means that um, most of the energy can be conserved in the resonating system without any losses. And uh, that offers low power um, driving of such MEMS mirror solutions. And this uh, low power consumption is of a particular importance for uh, all kinds of mobile applications and particularly also for these augmented reality displays. So the lower the power consumption of the MEMS scanning device, the longer is the runtime of the operating uh, AR glasses. And uh, so that's something where we see a good future for, for augmented. However, we need to be aware that Augmented is a young startup and uh, does not uh, offer or have uh, history such as the big companies, Bosch, uh, Infineon, and so on. Uh, so um, we uh, need to demonstrate that our technology is superior. Competition is raised. Uh, we want to convince uh, customers that this is the optimum solution to a small problem factor 
fashionable uh, AR glasses, smart glasses. You're you going for something that is small, that is affordable, a uh, cost effective. In this in this case, actually, very, very, very cost effective, and also that requires low power consumption. So what you need are system integrators uh, in in environments that demand these three, these three. And then, of course, you talk about the consumer electronics. I show I saw the mounted of the of the glass. Uh, it, is it difficult for for a startup to outreach these uh, these kind of companies? Uh, no, actually, it's not. Um, uh, based on the long history we had uh, at Fraunhofer, more than 20 years, um, we were well known already uh, among those big companies. And so it was not necessary that we uh, do a lot of advertising. Uh, we were contacted by these uh, big companies um, by themselves. So it was just a reverse way. We did not have to contact them. It was sufficient that they uh, and knew how to contact us. I also would like to to know that uh, we have something else for us, right? You're going to show us a 3D camera system. Am I right? Yes, yes, yes. Let's go. Let's see it. Let's see it. I'm right. super excited. So far, I'm actually getting lots of WhatsApps. I think I'm checking here. Everybody is actually congratulating for this demonstration so far. Okay, 3D cameras. Hello, I'm Jose from Epic. How are you doing? Okay. Uh, let me introduce you, Lars and Marcel, um, our colleagues that are working uh, on 3D camera uh, demonstrators. So here we are using the same uh, MEMS mirrors, uh, the same electronics to just set up another um, application demonstrator. Here showing a 3D camera that is capable uh, to, um, yeah, to provide millions of uh, 3D data points a second. So please yeah. go ahead. Hi, at first. Um, yeah. Um, we have a little uh, a video for you prepared to show um, the data requirement of the 3D camera. Oh, if it will work. No, it won't work. Okay. Um, there you what should the see. What are we seeing? Is that a gargoyle? It's, uh, it looks yeah, like yeah, a, it's dragon. a little dragon. Yeah, <laughs> cool. There's, there's a little dragon here in front of you. And uh, this is our primary um, 3D scanning object at the moment. So there are a lot of details we want to uh, show. And on the uh, right side, you can see a false um, color um, picture of the distances. And on the left side, you see uh, the amplitude image. So we can, uh, as uh, Thomas already mentioned, um, detect up to uh, 250 million uh, distance and amplitude uh, values per second. And this is the, with this current setup. In the future, we want to miniaturize it uh, a lot, but uh, at the moment, this will work as a nice camera. This yeah. is, we, we live definitely in the segment of 3D camera systems. Uh, the, the, the new iPhone 12 has, has LiDAR on it. The, 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 the people who are developing hyperspectral imaging that require ultra, ultra fast 3D cameras. Uh, Everybody is going into this direction. So how, what is the, the, the preferred future for Occumented on entering this, uh, this market segment? Are you looking towards also the consumer electronics cameras? Or perhaps also in this case, you can also target some high-end or other other market segments here. Yeah, so so we are we are talking both markets. So as you already said, um, we can provide a very high data range per second. So with the very very fast scanners we have, and a single diet laser, and then here in this setup an APD, uh, we can provide so many uh, data points. That's interesting for the industrial people, but for the consumers, I think as well. So as we said. In the iPhone, there is the first 3D camera, but this is still limited in, um, yeah, in, in the pixel size, the, the pixel number and the frame rate. So with our MEM scanning solution, we think that we can drastically improve this uh, 3D cameras. And we are as well um, um, aiming at, at consumer and, and industrial markets with this kind of uh, cameras as well. Yeah. We live in a world in which everything has to be 3D image, from the driver while he's driving to the to the gamer in front of the TV to the person who is going to the, who goes to the doctor. The market is huge. Yes, yeah. right. In the future, you will pay with your face, and for this uh, to make this kind of payment um, process uh, safe, it's necessary to have high resolution 3D camera systems. 
And uh, this is one approach to have a scanning laser um, using our MEMS mirrors and, and building a short range LIDAR camera with very high uh, data rate. And, and that's uh, the, the uh, one option to, to make this 3D sensing um, a safe way. And um, this is not only for the consumer market, but also for yeah, regular payments and, and many interfaces that are coming in the near future. Um, and we have to think of all the um, uh, mixed reality markets as well. Um, you can only do uh, appropriate mixed reality if you uh, do not only have a, a superior uh, display, but also the necessary 3D sensing capabilities. And that's where we also want to, to uh, contribute our uh, products in the future. I was told that you were going to show me the clean room, and I think I yeah. forgot my clean room right. suit. So how do we solve this? <laughs> Let's go. Let's go to the clean room. We switch over to our colleague, Stefan Marowska. All right. We go to the clean room now. Let's see how the technology is made. Hello. This is Jose from Epic. Hi, Jose. Can you hear me? Loud and clear. I can also oh. see you very, very clearly. What are you going to show us? Very good. So I'm Stefan Marowska, head of operations from Occimented, and I'm at the front of our location at the moment. Roughly 100 meter beeline from the augmented headquarter, and I'm directly inside the team room complex and give you now a brief window tour throughout the different compartments which are visible from this side. Fantastic. So we, as augmented, using the front of our services for development and manufacturing of our MIMS devices. This equipment of this clean room is 200 millimeter state of the art for MEMS manufacturing, up to 1 million devices per year on an area of 1,000 square meter. Behind 200 millimeter wafers, 1 million devices. So how many wafers is that? I, so I, my, my it math depends, is, uh, depends on the sample size um, and the die size itself. So it's between, let's say, 1,000 to 2,000 wafers per year. Fantastic. And that, that's just the beginning. So if, if, uh, if uh, yeah. this technology is fully suitable for upscaling, so any company wants to, wants to actually go into higher volumes, we can make it happen. We're just waiting for that. Please, please continue. That's, that's true, that's true. We are capable of extending here the capabilities of up to 5 million devices with certain measures, but we are also in contact and exchange with commercial foundries throughout the world to scale even beyond depending on the customer demands. Um, going back to the window tour here behind me, you see the um, lithography area with the light, um, um, green, yellow light, um, where we bring photosensitive uh, layers onto the wafers for protecting them in subsequent processes which is an elementary process for wafer manufacturing, and the wafers came several times in this area. Do you use optical lithography for the manufacturing? Yes. Is there any, any yes. wafer stepper envisioned in the future? Yes, true. That's, uh, that's what we are using. We use wafer steppers. We're using classical coders and developers, um, which are standard uh, equipment for semiconductor and processing. If, if there is a, a generic process, uh, how many, just to have an idea, how many steps, how many, how many steps do you have in the, in the clean room for the, for the people to follow? Uh, I, I would say it's around 70 different steps, um, ranging from lithography steps um, up to the position steps, uh, etching, wet etching, dry etching, cleaning, and, and so on. So up to 70, including with microscope controls and uh, yeah, test measurements. To be fairly honest with you, I thought you were going to say a lot more than that. Because I, I was comparing this with the integration of silicon photonics with MEMS, and there is a process for that going for the members, and it's about mm -hmm. 150 steps. So this is uh, this is actually quite quite optimized. Uh, one more thing to be to be quite yeah. amazed with the technology. That's true. So this uh, process was developed roughly 10 years ago, and it's already quite mature. So it's a polysilicon-based technology out of which we are manufacturing all our MEMS devices. Um, and we have these unique wafer bonding processes, um, which allows us to encapsulate um, several hundred devices in one process instead of, let's say, dye, uh, by dye placement and uh, typical uh, assembly processes. How many people do work in the clean room normally? Uh, it depends. Um, well, uh, I would say, to give you a rough number, it's 30 to 40 people roughly. And do you or require. From operators and engineers. The typical class from what I see behind is about 10,000, right? Um, it's uh, ISO 3 to ISO 4, if I remember correct, uh, from the team class area. The better ISO class is in the lithography, and in the other compartment it's a little bit uh, less uh, in the requirements with respect to cleanness and dust freeness. 
It is great because you managed to have a process that is a MEMS process that also can incorporate optics at wafer level. And that's quite, quite amazing. Quite amazing all, in only 70, 70 clean room steps. What else, what else are you going to show us? I want to see more windows. Let's, let's, go, let's go one step further. Um, we are going now to the wafer bond area where we do this wafer to wafer encapsulating process for hermetically sealing our devices with a vacuum inside, as Thomas mentioned before. This is for one thing needed to protect the devices against the environmental impacts like dust or humidity, which is crucial for automotive. But on the other hand, we create a vacuum inside and by that removing the air damping from the device and have a frictionless uh, movement of the scanner and reaching therefore high performance in the sense of high scan angles with low power consumptions. The wafer to wafer bonding process, uh, I, this, I guess you have a higher, higher class in the clean room, right? This is... Uh, from what I see, uh, you're, you're using here, uh, which, which standard for the clean room? Is it class 100 or is it? Uh... So uh, for, from, the, from the old definition of the this US standard, it's uh, clean room class 10. So it means uh, 10 particles of 0.5 micrometer in one cubic foot. <laughs> so it's a really clean area. As you might see also with the colleagues in the background, they have to wear these protection suits. Um, so it's really dust free environment um, to protect any uh, contamination of the you should know, I used to visit 150 companies a year, so I, I used to go to every clean room and wear the suit, and it was a fantastic experience to see it, and I can't wait to go to It's a Home, but it's been so fantastic to see it virtually. Is there anything else that you want to show us? Any other window? Yeah. We have another compartment which we can see from the window area. Let's go a step further. This is the area where we have the position equipment, and uh, deposit, uh, for example, metals, different kinds of metals. Uh, for example, for the mirror plates, uh, where we use aluminum or also wall coating, this is possible. Uh, now we have standard uh, sputtering tools or operation tools available to have yeah, state-of-the-art um, thin film processing capabilities. But also our um, actuation materials deposited here. With one of our technologies we have, we use piezoelectric actuation and also this piezoelectric material is deposited in this area. Fantastic. The, the incorporation of piezoelectric materials is, of course, one, one challenge for any, any volume production uh, manufacturing. And this is something that you have mastered. Uh, for me, when I see the manufacturing, the first thing I think is in the volume production wafer level, a hermetically sealed product. That's already one thing that is huge. The second thing is in very, very high class, we are talking class 10, they managed to do wafer to wafer bonding for any kind of material that you need, but they actually have mastered the wafer to wafer bonding. And the third part is, of course, here we are talking about having something that is small, low cost, affordable, and with low power consumption in the volume production. Having the whole process, the whole process optimized and suitable to any company that want to help with the upscaling, that's huge. Thank you very, very much for this. It's been quite an experience. I hope that soon I can go with you in the clean room. Yeah, you're welcome. We hope for that. Thank you Thank very you. much. And back to you, Jose, and HQ. Thank you very much. And back to Thomas. Thomas, it's been such an amazing experience. I saw the window tour. I loved it. And now it is time to relax. I'm going to have a bit of coffee. I don't know if I need more coffee. I don't know about that, but I always like to drink coffee. I'm going to drink a bit more of coffee. I'm going to ask you one thing. I'm going to ask you to answer the epic question. Do you know what the epic question is? The epic question is you are a company. And the other 620 members want to do business with you. So what can you do for them and what can they do for you? Yeah, so um, we, what can we do for them? So we are providing our map scanning solution for, for all different applications that we have shown today. So um, we, we are open for, for any kind of corporations um, in all these um, spaces. And we would love to, to yeah, get to know to more companies from the Epic community, um, from, from lasers and other optical detectors. And uh, so that's what, what, what we are looking for. So more partners. Um, for for uh, integrating all these uh, scanners in different applications. Yeah, we can add that um, our company is always open to develop customized solutions. So it's not the case that we have just a few uh, finished uh, designs of MEMS mirrors. We are always open to develop new uh, MEMS mirror devices for new challenges uh, coming from different uh, 
partners within the EPIC consortium. And, and so we are open for any kind of cooperation and are interested to hear more on your needs. Today, normally I travel along and I, I like traveling along. Normally I travel along, but today I didn't. Today I came with a group of friends. Today I came with Jakub from Elmo Semiconductor, with Dominic from FinTech, with Michael from FISBA, with Christoph from Fraunhofer FMD, with Sebastian from Huawei, with Frank from NTS Optel, with Benedict and, and uh, from Occumented, here we have, from Michael with Rod Microtech, and from Dieter from Basak Photonics. I want all of them to have the chance to ask you how you can work together. So the floor and my friends are welcoming your questions. Anybody has a question or something in mind? I think you know me by now. If there are no questions, I ask the questions. My first person I want to, to have on the floor is Simon from Javil Optics, from the beautiful capital of optics in Europe, which is Jena. Simon, how are you doing today? I'm all good. How about yourself? I'm so happy because, first of all, I love this area of Germany. Second, I am a huge fan of wafer level manufacturing and I love the demonstration of ARVR. That was out of this world. Simon, how do you think we can do business, Javil Optics and Occumented? So, first of all, uh, thanks to the Occumented team. Very impressive uh, demonstration and insight. Uh, I have to say that we have been in touch with Occumented, so we know each other already from uh, previous discussions. And um, I think their uh, MEM space scanners are um, really competitive, so to say. And Jabil is all about, let's say, higher integrating those devices into uh, complete AR glasses and complete LiDAR systems. And uh, we, we know about the quality of Occumented. Michael, you ever had the chance, uh, Thomas, you had the chance, you have to go to visit uh, the showroom of Javil Optics in Jena. I went there. This is where the manufacturing the GoPro camera. So I was amazed by the kind of technologies they can do. And definitely Javil Optics, a key company in, in, in the Epic Network of helping upscaling and helping technologies reaching the consumer and the high volume market. Simon, thank you very much for joining. I'm going to go to... The other side of Germany, I'm going to go to Rod Microtech in Stuttgart. Thank you very much for joining today, Michael. Yeah, hello. Um, first of all, a great show from Augmented. We know us also already from former times or from some minutes uh, visits before. Uh, so Rod Microtech is, is famous for uh, in, in the industry for wafer test, qualification, component test. And uh, as such, uh, probably we can we can have a good cooperation there. Um, we are also familiar with automotive qualification of components and so on. So that's definitely something where we can help and, and support. Yes. What do you think, Thomas? Is there room for cooperation there? Yeah, that's, that's actually what we need. So uh, we are aware that we can do anything, everything uh, on our itself. So especially like automotive qualification. So uh, we are very interested in having partners for this. And um, yeah, we, are, we know we might protect already. So we are in touch with them already. Yep. You know, you know, Thomas, what is happening right now in Europe? We are living the, the revolution of wafer level micro optics manufacturing. And it's incredible the, the kind of things that are being achieved in automotive lighting, the kind of things that are being achieved in consumer electronics. Uh, one of the companies in the micro optics market is, is FISVA. And Michael, Michael joined the meeting today from FISVA. Michael, how are you doing? Fine, how are you doing? I'm doing great. I, I hope that. that you spotted some room for cooperation with my friends in Itzeho. Yeah, we know each other um, pretty well. But I have a question for you. I've seen your um, automotive ladder, um, the wide angle. Can you tell us uh, what is the maximum distance that you can reach? Yeah, we, we um, already uh, explained that we first started with a proof of concept demonstrator. So that demonstrator was a bi-actual system where you use our MEMS mirror for illumination of the scenery and detecting by a second optical path. And the target for this kind of demonstrator is to have a range of about 20 meters. That was actually achieved already. Um, there are other applications where people are interested to further extend the range. Uh, that can also be done. Uh, but probably needs a larger collection optics, receiver optics. Um, our um, primary interest is to 
develop a LiDAR sensor solution, which is extremely low cost and extremely uh, compact. So small that it can be easily incorporated and implemented in the side mirrors of the car. Um, meeting all those requirements and a small uh, form factor, low cost, uh, is probably the key to, uh, to enabling really um, next safety level um, uh, yeah, su successful introduction of those sensors. Uh, we see that the, the price and the cost of, of such uh, large uh, long-range uh, sensors is always a challenge to, to, to a successful integration or um, uh, launch of such products in the market. But uh, meeting the, the uh, low cost um, expectations of the OEMs is probably the key. And this is something which we have in mind. We want to uh, offer those sensors at low cost and a very small form factor. Um, then this is not only of interest for the automotive market, it's also of interest for uh, small LiDAR sensors for drones, um, where you probably need um, multiple devices on, on one drone uh, for, for uh, collision avoidance, uh, for example. So there are many other applications for very small form factor, large field of view, uh, short range LiDAR systems. And so it's not so our primary focus to, to meet uh, and, and to get into competition with all the other big uh, LiDAR manufacturers that already target 250 meters or 300 meters. We can do this large diameter MEMS mirrors as well with partners, but it's not our primary focus. We want to be the first to develop a small form factor, wide field of view, high resolution and low cost uh, sensor solution for side mirrors in the car for um, blind spot uh, detection, uh, right turn, uh, safety uh, improvements, and so on. Uh, so there are many applications for the, uh, such small systems. Okay, and and the, the, the volume production manufacturability, this is, this is the key. This is what we have to explore with Documented. Uh, Vasage Photonics, Vasage Photonics. Dieter, how are you doing? Um, good, Jose. Thank you so much. Um, I have a quick question. I was just wondering, you, you showed the 3D scanner. I come from the Raman spectroscopy side. Do you think that can also be that the that, that 2D mirror can be combined with the Raman system where a laser shoots out and the signal comes back in and gets imaged into a spectrometer? Yes, absolutely. Maybe we should know more details on the acceptable scan speed. Uh, sometimes the different detection concepts require the scanning speed not to be too high because there's some integration time needed to get to proper signal quality and so on. So I would expect and, and would not be surprised that you probably need a kind of adaptation of the scanning speed and mirror diameter uh, while 180 degrees field of view is probably not required. Um, so um, we can only tell you that Yes, definitely, we are open to, to think of such solution and customized developments as well. Um, that's definitely something we can do, uh, but we need to know the proper requirements coming from your optical system, your laser source, and the uh, integration time needed for that uh, signal process. One more thing I wanted to talk to you about, because you mentioned a lot of the volume production, 3D scanning, face ID recognition. There is a company in Epic that is helping many members on this particular market segment, and they are in the Netherlands. So let's make a connection Germany, the Netherlands today. Frank Ernst from NTS of Tel, how are you doing? Hi, I'm doing fine, thank you. After seeing all this, what's on your mind? Well, um, uh, first of all, I think the uh, demonstration was uh, uh, very interesting. It was a perfect demonstration. Um, NTS already has uh, uh, contact with Occumented uh, to uh, uh, deliver a, um, a scanner, uh, yeah, a tester for for these uh, these uh, scanners. Yes, we, we are already in contact with NTS Optel and, and right, you will right. be a, a, an, an important partner as the other ones we discussed uh, with uh, before are as well important partners to us. Uh, you, you, you all understand that we are already well connected with an EPIC and uh, so it's a very nice community and, and uh, it's, it's, no. it's um, a, a, the, the, the big advantage of this um, 
community that uh, everyone uh, can uh, cooperate with everyone. And, and uh, uh, NTS Optel is also one of our uh, important partners uh, for uh, demonstrator setups or for measurement equipment. Yeah. We have a lot of people in the room. I also would like to say that if you have any further questions or comments, now is the time. But when it comes to the integration with backend process, I want to go, the last time I want to go to IM Tech. I want to go to Matthias. Matthias, uh, you have been talking a lot about integration of technologies and of backend integration of technologies. When you see a company like Documented that manages to do volume production or something small with low power consumption at a wafer level, what do you have in mind? So what I do have in mind for sure is uh, large volume for automotive industries, but on the other hand, but this is maybe something more where JBL Optics is in. So we are not a really high volume manufacturer, but what I also think is that uh, this device is very, 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 very well designed and developed for niche markets. So I'm thinking about medical technologies. I'm thinking about scanning of patients. I'm thinking about scanning of, for example, people who live in, in nursery homes and something like that. And this is exactly where we can be a door opener for such kind of niche markets. And we can also be, for example, a company who can partner with you uh, in terms of very, very special developments for low uh, quantity applications, but high quality applications. So I usually call it the, the prosumer market and not the consumer market. Okay. So automotive is more, automotive is more, um, is more consumer. We are talking about millions or even billions of pieces. And this is exactly what I'm, where I would be happy if we can continue our communication we already had. And uh, maybe that we, that we can both be a door opener, maybe also in conjunction with Jable Optics in a kind of collaborative competition so that we can also be a, uh, maybe a sub-supplier to this company for later assembly, what we cannot perform. Very good. Thanks a lot. Uh, maybe I can uh, add a uh, little comment. The whole story of our MEMS mirror started in 1995 or um, um, with the first project uh, focusing on the development of a tiny two-axis uh, laser scanning uh, device for endoscopy, for minimal invasive surgery. So mm -hmm. this is exactly a niche market where maybe we could cooperate uh, as well. And um, yep. yeah, very good. Thanks. The, okay. endoscopy, okay. the endoscopy market is huge. We are talking about actually going into disposable of high-end optical yeah. systems. And I obviously yeah. see this is this is really your playground, making something high-end at low cost. Well, cost-effective. I'm going to go back to you for the last time to eat Seho. And I'm going to ask you, because I'm a dreamer, if we had this company visiting... 10 years, in 10 years, 10 years from now, I will have a bit less hair, but I will be equally excited. Uh, what kind of things do you think you would tell me differently? Think about your preferred future, dream away. Yeah, so 10 years is far away. So yeah, well, um, I think what, what we are uh, really trying to, to set up here, it's always a, uh, a company that, that has really, um, yeah, nice MEM scanning products and then we we want to, to bring this into the big uh, consumer and automotive markets and I think in 10 years uh, yeah at the latest we will be successful with that so then we will have hopefully a few products in the, the big markets um, and have a great company here in northern Germany uh, next to to um, ICIT our team room and with own uh, fabrication sites here as well so that's our aim as well yeah. So let's do it. Third, third, sorry, please go ahead. <laughs> sorry. Um, I, yeah, I have a short uh, um, comment uh, to add. Um, we are mainly fabulous, uh, as, uh, as augmented, but uh, there's one part which we want to have uh, our own mass fabrication in our own hands. And this is related to those glass wafers, which we showed in the beginning. This is very unique and, and this the key how to produce those devices or glass wafers. Uh, that's the secret we want to keep at Augmented and, and uh, at our Fraunhofer colleagues. Um, and, and that is something where we want to set up our own production, high volume production here at ITSO, in Schleswig-Holstein, in the northern part of Germany. Uh, whereas the silicon parts can be uh, um, established as uh, at the foundries. Um, 
you know all those big names of the large volume foundries. So they can do uh, take over the, the, the silicon parts, whereas we want to still um, remain responsible for the glass parts. This is exactly what I wanted to hear. We want volume production of photonics in Europe and I want it in Germany. Thank you very much for this. I would like to, first of all, congratulate the cameraman. What an amazing job you have done. I also would like to remind everyone that there was no sponsored content today. 